So we're truly honored to have amongst us some of our key delegates who have stayed on from the FEMA conference on Wednesday and Thursday and have stayed to attend our scientific program. And it's very nice to see old friends and people that have come from 2013 at the last convention or I'm a meeting which we had with them and to come and attend with us here again this time around. Allah says in the Quran, O mankind, we created you from a single pair of male and female and made you into nations and tribes that you may know each other, not that you may despise each other. And verily, the most honored of you in the sight of Allah is he who is the most righteous of you. And Allah has full knowledge and is well acquainted with all things. The first part of the ayah is that we've created you and made you into nations and tribes. And truly those nations and tribes are what we see around us here today. We had 17 countries represented at FEMA. And now we have added to that Joburg, Harking, <laughs> Pretoria, Durban. And then of course the honorable a world of Cape Town in itself. So we've added another 14 countries all in itself. The most important thing that we have is that we have unity amongst all of us. Yes, we are IMAs in 17 countries. Yes, we are IMAs representing different populations and peoples. But exactly what our convener said, our theme is healthy families, healthy communities. Every single person here is a member of a family. That family, that family unit is part of an IMA should be part of an IMA, you're not speaking in it. Should be part of an IMA, and that IMA is to make stronger communities. And us together with all the representative bodies we see around us, Gift of the Victor Givers, our Pakistani brothers, um, with um, Alim Dad at the back, all of us together do one thing only one thing, serve in the purpose of Allah to serve our communities. Let me hear my back, yes, thank you. Speak to People giving me looks. I now call upon our Honourable Master President, Dr. President Sumi. There's nothing really left for me to say. I think somebody else said what needed to be said. I'm sure you would have rather heard Karin Nadim's uh, more than you would listen to me. Our leader. <clears throat> was Minister of Health, but he's still a Minister of Health head for portfolios, but uh, the last one is the one I think we all um, are in awe of as, uh, as the Minister of International Affairs, but still our leader, President of uh, FEMA, all of the delegates, the leadership of all of the IMAs all over the world, our families, the hard-working branch of IMA South Africa from the Cape, I would have said the Paris Cape, but not with this weather. Our convention committee, the staff on, on whose hard work we get to take uh, some accolades. All of you, as Riaz has said, it's really a pleasure for us to welcome you and, and, and to see you. I uh, will leave a little bit of expansion on FEMA for Professor Rashid, the president of FEMA. But FEMA stands, you know, federation of the IMAs. And over attending the council meetings over the past two years, I think we should make it the F for family because it is really a family. We know that the IMASA um, is a family. You don't need CPD points to attend a con uh, the convention. Really, there's a lot you can get online, all of the knowledge. But it's the bond, the networking, the socializing that brings us together, uh, despite the sometimes logistical difficulties and everything else. And FEMA, I, I have seen, is a greater family. The collective vision, uh, like I said, the has said all of this already. The collective vision that brings everybody in FEMA together is to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the service of humanity. And we have seen the collective resources, brains, trust, intellectual capital, the goodwill come together once a year as FEMA, everybody sharing. And I, I must tell you that it is astounding the scope and the breadth of the work that is done, particularly in many parts of Africa, by some of the representatives sitting on the table here. 
um, and, and those who, who have left, and those, and, and those who unfortunately for logistical and other political reasons could not make it. It is a collaboration that makes one plus one equals to four. And Alhamdulillah, it has the barakah, it has the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and of course, we, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts our, our efforts. Now, two years ago, in, there were two delegates that came to the convention in Durban, quiet, unassuming, um, registered. We recognized that they were not South African. They turned out to be two delegates from Burundi. And we sat with them and we interacted with them and they quietly went about their business. Yesterday, we saw the motivation and application from, from the IME of Burundi. And the president of FEMA said to him, tell us about your IME. And to our astonishment, am I right, the Professor Rashid? He said, well, when we were students, we wanted to form an IMA. And we looked around and there was nothing. So we, I don't want to use that word. I will say we use the search engine because that other company also wants to block out what's happening in Palestine. But they used the search engine. And they did some research. And they said, oh, okay, these are some organizations. And we will form an Islamic Medical Association. They did further research and they saw we were having a convention in, in, in Durban. So they unassumingly quietly registered and attended, and, and attended as uh, one or two others as well. And those students today are specialist consultants. And they, of course, applied yesterday uh, to become members of FEMA. That hunger is what we need to reinstall in ourselves, is what we have become complacent about. As Professor Rashid said, it has been the other way around. It has been the consultants. Um, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the matured um, medical professionals, doctors, others, dentists, physiotherapists, etc., who have had the vision to say, okay, we sort of a mud life, let's see what we can do for the Akhara and establish NGOs, etc. Here it was the students, because they had a passion to form something with an Islamic ethos. And I think that is something that we need to instill in our students. I'll come to our visiting students just now, but to that end, what we've done at the IMA is put some financial resources behind our student wing, uh, paid for them to attend the FEMA Umrah camp, where they network with other students from all over the world, subsidize many of them to attend the convention, this one and the others, um, have these graduation ceremonies, have orientation ceremonies. So we start to build the network for, for our replacements, inshallah. A lot of what the IMA does is in your brochure. We will cover it tomorrow in the uh, AGM. So I'm not going to go into detailed statistics for fear that Riaz will also tell me to get off the stage, but uh, I'll just maybe cover uh, one or one or two aspects of our international projects. <clears throat> Dr. Jakob Isak. who passed on earlier this year. He's taken us three people to replace him. Um, yeah, so it is fitting that Dr. Jakob Bayer has volunteered. Excuse me. Jakob, he segmented me and many of us on this, on, on this uh, NEC. And uh, if you'll allow me to collect my thoughts. <clears throat> so 
It is fitting that Jakob Weyer, who was also mentored by Dr. Jakob Isaac, has volunteered to take over our international meeting portfolio. His brother Mohammed Weyer will take over the relief portfolio for, that Jakob performed for Gift of the, of the Givers. Our hard working convener, Dr. Shanaz Musa, will take over the, the IMA um, medical mission for Hajj. So during COVID and um, after that, the IMA took a hiatus from the Hajj mission, which we traditionally always ran with Zahok. Um, and I'm happy that Janaz has volunteered um, to take over the center. I know Cape Townians don't need the rest, so I have scheduled a meeting for 8 o'clock Monday morning with Zahok. Inshallah. So, it is this kind of family bond that is in the IMSA that I should say probably brings us to tears. It is not just some person who passed away. Dr. Idal Rawat passed away um, earlier this year, who was also a, a stalwart of the IMA. Coming back to just a brief overview of the IMA uh, beyond statistics. The membership growth still remains a challenge for us. Young people seem to not either join or we have difficulty retaining membership. And we are strategizing on how best we can look at reinventing some parts of the IMA to see what is it that will attract people to replace us in the near future. Alhamdulillah, the growth that has come has come from the allied disciplines. And they have rightfully taken their place within the IMA family. As conveners and conventions, as leadership of branches, as part of the NEC. Um, and the numbers growth has come from there. And we see it in a reflection in the conventions now, traditionally medical and dental. Then we saw the growth with optometry sessions. Now we have a pharmaceutical session here. I believe our convener tells us that for next year, they want to look at sessions for physio, uh, parallel sessions for physios, OTs, biokinesis. So, alhamdulillah, that is fantastic, and and I might add, dominated by our sisters and mothers. So that is a wonderful part of our growth. But clearly, we 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 are we, we still need a lot of work with our mental and uh, medical and dental colleagues. Cape Town has purchased the property. Alhamdulillah, it now has its own property from which to grow, and. We expand the range of our services and more importantly invite all of you uh, from Cape Town to come and take part and get involved and expand the membership of the IMA in Cape Town. Alhamdulillah 27.4 and we're thankful for that has sponsored a property in Johannesburg for the Johannesburg branch. And inshallah that transaction will be concluded very soon and we hope that too will serve as a catalyst for growth and for expansion of our services. At the moment, the much of it is offered in Durban because we've had, had the space and the properties, but inshallah, we, we want to see this growth in the other provinces as well. Our bursary fund started in 2022, has to date paid out 1.5 million rands in bursaries, thanks in no small part to Dr. Mchar Suleiman from Gift of the Givers for a substantial contribution to that. And you are welcome to donate your zakat, your lilla, your sadaqa for, this, for, these, for these students as well. IMA traditionally has been seen as an organization involved in charity. And clearly that is the reason, on the foundation on which it was built. Some of the stalwarts here present today on whose shoulders we stand. But it's expanded beyond that. IMA is not just a charity relief organization anymore involved in advocacy, in public relations, in academia, in research, sending out advisories, working with the various NGOs, theological bodies, uh, all in the spirit of providing a service to our communities, not just Muslim, but across uh, the board. The vast majority of our services are not confined, are not, in fact, for the Muslim community. It is, it is not our 
our ethos that we should only care for Muslims. As we look to the future, we are, I won't be long, we are intent on developing a legacy of wakaf for the IMA. Inshallah, very soon we will set up a webinar for the experts in wakaf, in tax, um, and wills, so that, and, and, and one of the ways you'll get to know this for the, for the medical professionals here is to keep in contact with your branches, make sure your, your, you know, the database is updated, we have your contacts, so we can send you these details, inshallah. We, at our graduations, we have always recognized the students who've graduated. We have decided that to, to really promote academic excellence, to promote research, we are in talks with some sponsors and our, some of our retired academics to develop the proper criteria for awards that recognize research and excellence in academia. Not just an award, but an award that comes with substantial prizes. Because I think if we are going to generate and inculcate an ethos of, of striving for excellence, like everything else, we need to put some money behind it. I've, uh, we also, of course, have the challenges of AI and technology. NHI has the same objections. We have universal access to health for all. And we have an IMA, notwithstanding its challenges, and we know many of them, we have to embrace it and see how we can make it work, both for ourselves and our professional practices, but also for the benefit of all of our people. This is, this is and, and I beg Riaz's indulgence here. One of the reasons you could get the students from Gaza here, over and above the efforts made by Dr. Michel Suleiman, is that you needed people, in this case UCT, to, to grease the wheels of bureaucracy, to grease the wheels of resistance. And this happens because you have people in those positions. Now, I want to make an appeal to all of you here that we have to, as a community, strive to ensure that the people with expertise go on to the boards of your medical aid, your PPS, your school governing bodies, all of these places where, at the moment, there are people who are frustrating our narrative, but pushing the Zionist narrative, for example, pushing a, pushing a transgender narrative whether we are involved with, with the schools, with the governing bodies, um, with uh, some of the Christian organizations in addressing some of, some of the issues related to, to transgender, the LGBTQI. But if you have a principal that, or a dean that is on a board where it's dominated by a certain community or a, or a certain ideology, then it is very hard to, to make inroads. And I appeal to you is to go back to your re religious authorities, your colleagues, to ensure that we put people in these positions, uh, these strategic positions, who will not become people who, who you know, who just uh, let let the, the the narrative. And I think you know what I'm referring to, uh, dominate, and that we have alternative narratives uh, in these places to grind the same wheels that we speak about. Finally. I left the, the best welcome for last. <clears throat> Many of you know that we have among us uh, students from Gaza brought through the efforts of Gift of the Givers and other, other people at UCT. There are talks afoot to bring students down to Tuckies and to Wits. And over and above what we are doing here today, Murti Abrams, and, and, and I want to recognize Murti for, for the efforts he's put in, and he will speak to that in, in a few minutes, Dr. Ahmed Bachir, uh, about some other programs that we are working together with FEMA and other organizations. But I want to say that the jihad of our lifetime is Palestine. Yes, and Dr. Imchaz repeated regularly, we have a duty and we are doing what we need to do for the people of South Africa first. We cannot be doing relief in Sudan and Malawi if 
we are not doing relief first in our own countries. But this is different. The Karbala of our lifetime is Gaza. I'm sure like me, many of you will sometimes sit and wonder, what were the, when, when, when the events that were unfolding in, in Medina and, 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 and when the Prophet's family were, you know, being persecuted and making their way to Karbala to have these meetings and were stabbed in the back by the very people they trusted. What were the rest of the Ummah? I mean, we, we're talking about an Ummah that involves Sahaba. What were they doing? So we have to ourselves, ourselves, what are we doing? I can say from the IMA as South Africans, as Muslims, that we will not found, be found wanting to do whatever we can for Gaza. Politically, we have the support of our government. Economically, we have the wherewithal and the resources. We have the brains trust. We have the expertise. And the mission of our lifetimes and the answer we'll have to give will be over what we did for Palestine and Gaza. So, I won't say no more. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.